एंटीबॉडीज वॉट आर दे हाउ डू दे बाइंड विद द एंटीजन एंड वॉट आर द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज इन आर बॉडी सो फर्स्ट इज लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट एक्चुअली इज अ एंटीबॉडी एंटीबॉडीज आर नथिंग बट दे आर ग्लाइको प्रोटीन्स और ऑल्सो नोन एज इम्यूनोग्लोबिन्स एंड दीज आर प्रोड्यूस्ड इन रिस्पॉन्स टू एनी इम्यून रिएक्शन सो लेट्स से योर बॉडी इज अटैक बाय एनी पैथोजन इट कैन बी वायरस इट कैन बी बैक्टीरिया एज सुन एज द पैथोजन अटैक्स द बॉडी स्टार्ट द इम्यून सिस्टम स्टार्ट टू क्रिएट एंटीबॉडीज एंड दैट रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ बाइंडिंग द स्पाइक्स ऑफ लेट से द वायरस वुड बी द एंटीजेंस एंड दीज एंटीबॉडीज वुड बाइंड टू दोज एंटीजेंस इन ऑर्डर टू डिस्ट्रॉय द पैथोजेंस एंड दैट्स हाउ द प्रोसेस ऑफ एंटीबॉडी वर्क दीज आर वॉट बेसिकली द एंटीबॉडीज आर सो टेक्निकली दे आर वाई शेप्ड स्ट्रक्चर एंड देयर प्रोसेस इज सिमिलर टू अ लॉ can keep so if the key fits the lock well it can open and it can close if the key does not fix the lock well what would happen these pathogens would keep on multiplying and infecting the body infect the body so to in order to make sure that the key works well we have to see that body is producing exact antibodies or specific antibodies that are required in order to combat the pathogen which has entered the body now this mechanism is also called as a search mechanism how is it called as a search mechanism it is a search mechanism because our body is searching and destroying specific antigens so we keep on searching and destroy the specific antigens and therefore help body recover from a disease now understanding this in context of the recent uh, situation is very very important so as of now we have covid 19 and this is a corona virus structure these are the spike proteins of the corona virus now these spike proteins when they open what would happen this antibodies would bind to the antigen so this is the antigen in binding to this antigen we would have the antibodies that would be produced and this antibody antigen binding would help understand how the immune system actually acts now in our body if we uh, talk about immunity or the immune system there are two immune systems one is the innate system the other is the adaptive system innate system is a system which we acquire since our birth so it's the body's capacity to fight or to resist diseases since we are born adaptive immune system develops in response to specific uh, uh, attack of the pathogen which is seen so let's say a person gets infected by covid 19 now as the person gets uh, infected by the virus what would happen the body would start to produce these antibodies and after the phase is completed these antibodies would remain as markers in the body now what would happen if there is any further virus that attacks the cell in that case these antibodies get triggered and they start to develop so we say that once the antibodies are developed there is a immunity that remains for a persistent period till the time these antibodies act as markers and trigger our immune system to develop a response against the infection again the amount of trigger also is important so usually we say slow triggers are good in case there are fast triggers those could lead to cytokine storm which we would cover in another separate lecture but the idea here is these antibodies uh, are the structure that help us to resist or to fight the infection now these antibodies are technically y shaped structure and there are five types of antibodies as you can see a d e g and m we would talk about each of these one by one but to understand the basic structure in each of these there is a heavy chain so the internal one is the heavy chain and then the outer one is the light chain on the top there is a variable component and the body of the antibody the remaining body is the constant component so antibody y shaped structure divided into two the top two spikes of the y shaped structure would have 
variable component and the remaining component would be the fixed component the between section would be connected by a disulfide bond as you can see uh, immunoglobin m is very very unique because there are 10 spikes that are seen and this makes the immunoglobin m or the antibody igm very very different from the other antibodies also on the top the variable section has a fragment anti antigen binding that binds with the antigen of very high specificity so if it is a pathogen with let's say covid 19 it would bind specifically to covid 19 and this variable uh, component has the fab i repeat again which is the fragment antigen binding has very very high specificity to what kind of antigen it would bind the constant region has or includes the fragment crystallization and these are the receptors which keep on circulating the white blood cells or the natural killer cells in the body now each of those let's understand those one by one so as we said five antibodies igm uh, which is the immunoglobin M and immunoglobin G are the most important. They circulate in the bloodstream and the various organs of the body. However, we have IgE, which is another important, which is in trigger to specifically allergic reactions. So, asthma, allergies due to pollen grains, peanut allergy are all in response to immunoglobin E, IgE as we call those. IgD is helping to activate the cells that make antibodies. So, it's more of a helper immunoglobin. So those are the different kinds of immunoglobin. As I said, IgM, as we looked onto the structure before, is a 10 spike shaped structure. So five Y structures joined one after the another. And it's uh, co also called as uh, the pattern of a god where each of the anti, uh, each of the Y shaped has a capacity to bind to an antigen. So IgM has a capability to bind to five antigens antigens at a given point of time. So let's talk about each of those. IgM as I said has a capability to bind to 5 of the antigens and is present only 5% in the blood. Very simple to remember. Now it is the first which is produced in response to the antigen in the body and as we saw it is very very large in size. So there are various subunits connected together and it's a polymer of subunits. So five Y shaped structures connected together in a pentametric form and this creates a uh, immunoglobin M. Now this is as we said the first response to the virus. So the first thing that forms is a immunoglobin M. It emerges seven to eight days after the exposure to any pathogen. However, after this we have the next immunoglobin which is the immunoglobin G that develops and this is 10 to 14 days after the exposure. It is the component which is present in highest proportion, so 70 to 75 percent in blood is immunoglobin G. Immunoglobin G is further into four types and is a component of humoral immune system that is the immune system which is initiated by the bigger molecules of IgM now which are present in the extracellular fluid. So the first response as we saw was the IgM immunoglobin M and then the next is IgG or the immunoglobin G and this is in response to the immunoglobin M and therefore is a result or has been initiated by bigger structures, the pentametric structures as we saw. Now, this is important why? This is the only antibody which can cross the placenta and provide immunity to fetus. So in the very few initial months of the infant's upbringing, it can lead to passive immunity. So in case if mother has suffered from a certain disease, the immunity of that disease gets transferred to the infant and this is classically due to immunoglobin G, very very important. Also, it is prevalent as we said in the extracellular fluid. So again important, the next is IgA. IgA or immunoglobin A is present in 10 to 15% uh, proportion in the blood. 
the places or the areas where we have these antibodies are the nasal mucus the serum saliva and intestinal fluid and this is again subdivided into a1 and a2 so two types of immunoglobins further subdivided and these are primarily uh, basically a defense mechanism against any pathogen which is either inhaled into the body or has been through the digestive system or the GI system. So therefore intestinal fluid and nasal mucus are the two pathways where you have the immunoglobin A that is seen. The next is immunoglobin E. This is one of the least prevalent and is most commonly seen as we already focused on in the allergic reactions. So any kind of allergic reactions, asthma, allergic rhinitis are result of uh, uh, in response to those we have the immunoglobin E that develops and therefore these are also called as the pathogen mediated cross-linked receptors that have been developed. The last is immunoglobin D. Immunoglobin D are B cell antigen receptors and help or participate in the B cell maturation, maintenance and activation. They are also involved in regulating the selection and the homeostasis. Now, a very important different type of antibody which is known as camelid antibody. Camelid antibodies are nanobodies which have only the heavy chains. The light chain in the Y structure is not present. And these are the antibodies which are used for antibody based therapies that are given. This was first identified in the camel and therefore it is known as camelid antibodies. So it is in a response to an antigen recognition site and is highly used for antibody based therapies. Now why it is used for antibody based therapies? There are certain reasons for it. First is it is very very small. It can be easily soluble. Uh, it has high specificity so it binds uh, very very exactly to the antigen where it has to be and has a very better penetration rate. So the pe tissue penetration rate in the case of camelid antibodies is higher and therefore is a suggested method for developing antibody based therapies. In the next class we would also understand what are monoclonal antibodies and how those are uh, artificially or made in the laboratories and those are again used as treatment for numerous diseases including uh, therapies for COVID-19 in severe patients. So those are are some of the basics about antibodies. Uh, with the antibodies, we also need to understand that strengthening of the immune system is important. So what is immune system? The components of immune system and diseases due to uh, problems in the immune system would be discussed in the uh, separate class. So stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.